What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Ahmad and I'm a first year medical student at the Mayo Clinic. Today I'm going to be sharing the nine tips that I use to improve my car score from a 124 to a 131. Before I reveal my strategies, please be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button so you don't miss future videos. Also, please be sure to leave a like if you're enjoying the video so far. Without any further ado, let's get right into it. Now, before you can master the car section, you first need to know what you're up against. In this section, you'll have to answer 53 questions that are divided up into nine passages with five to seven questions per passage. On the shortened 2020 version of your MCAT, you'll have eight passages, which reduces the number of questions you have to 48. On your exam, half of the CARS passages will be from the humanities, and the other half will be from the social sciences. Now, that being said, I want to emphasize that no outside knowledge is necessary for CARS. What that means is the double AMC will never test your knowledge on a specific subject within the car section. What they are doing is testing your ability to reason through an author's argument in a short period of time, regardless of what the topic of the passage is. Now, with all that said, let's talk strategy. My first tip for improving your car score is to read the passage first and ignore the questions entirely until you're finished reading the passage. While looking at the questions before reading the passage is a good idea on other sections, it's a bad idea for cars. The reason for this is, is that cars is not about searching for facts within a passage. In fact, only 30% of the questions on cars ask you about basic components of the text. In other words, you can only answer about 30% of the questions about the passage without a deep understanding of the passage. That means that over 70% of the questions will ask you about things like the author's tone and point of view, which are revealed over the course of the passage and not found in any one sentence. Therefore, no matter what the questions ask, you're going to need to end up reading the whole passage anyway, so save yourself the time, read the passage first, and get to the questions later. Tip number two is to never skim through cars passages. Even when people follow tip number one, they make the mistake of reading the passage too quickly and or skimming because they want to get to the questions faster. Skimming will never give you enough information to answer all of the questions accurately. If you skim nine times out of 10, you're going to end up needing to reread the entire passage because you didn't get all the information you needed the first time around. What you should do instead of skimming is thoroughly read the passage once as if you'll never get the chance to read it again. Although you'll spend a little bit of extra time doing that, you'll be able to answer the questions much more accurately and effectively because you have the confidence that you understood the passage entirely the first time around. The third tip is all about keeping track of your time. Each exam will have nine passages to complete, which means you'll have 10 minutes to complete each passage. Again, if you're taking the shortened 2020 version of the MCAT, you'll have eight passages, but you'll still have about 10 minutes for each passage. Since passages vary from anywhere between five to seven questions each, you can take about nine plus minutes on your five question passages, 10 minutes on your six question passages, and just under 11 minutes on your seven question passages. If timing is an issue for you like it was for me, you have to keep an eye on the clock starting at the beginning of the car section because once you fall behind in cars, it's usually too late to catch up. Now, awareness of timing is only half the battle because if you're answering questions quickly and not accurately, you're not getting very far, which takes me to the next tip. Tip number four is about improving your speed with purposeful practice. What I mean by purposeful practice is that it's not enough to just practice cars passages without a strategy. You need to be practicing to improve your speed without sacrificing accuracy. And the only way to do that is by first focusing on improving your accuracy while ignoring speed and then maintaining that accuracy while you increase your speed. Allow me to use myself as an example. When I started with cars, I had issues with both speed and accuracy. I never finished a car section completely within the allotted time, and I did poorly even on the questions that I did finish. My first reaction to that was to add a strict time limit so I'd be able to finish on time and improve my score. However, the only thing that did for me was decrease my accuracy more while also developing bad habits like skimming. What worked for me, what I recommended to my students, and what I recommend for you is that you take a week to practice cars passages while completely ignoring the time. In this week, take as much time as you need to do two passages per day. If you need 30 minutes of passage, you can take that time, as long as you focus on getting your accuracy as high as possible. The next week, do three cars passages a day, but give yourself a maximum of 15 minutes for each passage. This is more than enough time since you usually only have 10 minutes, but still challenge yourself to get as many questions right as possible. 
The goal here is to maintain your accuracy despite the new time limit. The week after that, you should do four cars passages a day and give yourself 12 and a half minutes for each one. I'm sure you see the pattern here. You need to continually increase your practice, which improves your stamina, decrease your time, which improves your speed, and focus on maintaining your accuracy, which means that when you're finishing the passages, you're still getting questions right. This strategy is so great because it builds your stamina, which is hugely important for the car section, especially when you have so many passages that you probably find uninteresting or dull. This is related to my next tip, which is about avoiding boredom and distractions. One of the biggest time killers on cars is zoning out while reading a passage. I'm not talking about major zone outs where you're daydreaming for 15 minutes only to realize that the section is over. This doesn't really happen. I'm talking about the silent killer, which is when your eyes glaze over a paragraph or two only to realize that you haven't read anything. Not only is this discouraging, it disrupts your flow and wastes precious time. To avoid this, you have to understand what causes you to lose focus most often, and that's distraction and boredom. In the context of the MCAT, distraction most often comes when you're still thinking about the last passage that you read especially when you had a question where you were torn between two answers. To avoid this, take a five second break between every passage that you read to reset your mind. I know that this trick sounds silly, but you'd be surprised at how much of a difference that it makes. Now, when it comes to boredom, a slightly different strategy applies because taking a five second break in the middle of your passage might disrupt your rhythm. My favorite way to get over boredom is to read the passage in a very enthusiastic voice in my own head as if it's my favorite subject and that I'm really interested in what's going on. I know that this trick also sounds a little gimmicky, but it made a huge difference for me. All of my students love it and I seriously recommend you try it out. The next tip is to be aware of the common tricks that the AAMC uses during the car section. One such trick is to use super confusing sentences or vocabulary words that they already know 95% of the test takers won't understand. The common reaction to seeing those types of sentences or words is to continuously reread them and freak out since you don't know what's going on. I know that's what I did when I used to come across these questions. You're not going to be able to memorize the entire dictionary and the AAMC does not expect that. They want you to do as best as you can with what you have and move on. Another common trick the AAMC uses is including an answer choice that's factually correct but disagrees with the author's point of view. For example, if the author believes something that's controversial or immoral, what the AAMC might do is include an answer choice that contradicts with the author, one that's factual or reasonable. They're not trying to test your personal judgment. They're trying to see how well you can understand the author's perspective, so keep that in mind. Another trick the AAMC uses is to use distractor answers that aren't related to the passage at all. The reason this tricks you is you think that you've missed something, so you go back to read the passage only to realize that you've just wasted your time. What you should do to combat this is to trust your original answers and avoid answers that are completely irrelevant because they probably are just that. The seventh tip is to be aware of frequently asked cars questions. Once you develop the ability to predict questions, you'll be able to read the passage with more purpose and improve your accuracy. The most common question on the car section are inference questions. Inference questions are those that require you to interpret the author's tone or point of view. These will show up in some form in every single passage you read, so be sure to pay attention to the author's tone, purpose, and point of view while reading. The second type of frequently asked questions are those that take information from outside of the passage and ask you how the author would likely feel about that information. This is just a tone and perspective question with an extra step. You need to be able to take the author's point of view and apply it to whatever new information is being offered. The third type of frequently asked questions are retrieval or given information questions. These questions are the most straightforward and test basic comprehension of the text. So while tone and point of view are extremely important, you can't just skip over the small details because they can and will be tested as well. The eighth tip is all about answering questions the right way. A big mistake a lot of people make is reading the answers to a question before giving yourself an opportunity to come up with an answer in your own head. What I mean is, if you've read the passage thoroughly, you should be able to come up with at least some type of answer before reading the multiple choice answers. When you read the answer choices before trying to answer the question on your own, what you'll end up doing subconsciously is trying to justify each of the answer choices either with information that you've read or by going back to the text. Either way, this is a huge waste of time and why you should think of your own answer before reading the answer choices. I'll throw in a bonus tip under the eighth tip and that's to never flag questions doing cars. You think you'll have time to get back to that question, but you won't. And even if you did have a little bit of time to come back to it, the passage will not be fresh in your head, so you won't be giving yourself a good chance to get the answer right. 
Just do your best, move on, and don't flag any questions. The ninth tip is to practice, because even if you know about tips one through eight, they won't get you anywhere unless you're applying what you've learned. Since I've already outlined a practice schedule for you under the fourth tip, what I'll give you here are the best practice resources for practicing cars. The most valuable resource for cars practice are the official AAMC practice cars questions. There aren't a lot of these, so you should save them until your last few weeks of MCAT practice. For practice that you'll be doing more than a few weeks away from your MCAT, you should be using Jack Weston, UWorld, and Khan Academy. All three of these resources model the style of the AAMC very well, and I highly recommend all of them. While Jack Weston does offer some paid resources, I personally use and recommend the free practice cars question of the day. Don't worry, you won't have to wait every day for a new passage. These passages go back for years and you have access to all of them for free so you can do as much practice as you want. Now UWorld is an MCAT question bank which you already know about if you watched my video on how to do on the MCAT. UWorld does offer a one week free trial so what I recommend you do if you don't want to pay for the three month subscription is take that week and do as many questions as you can. The reason I really like UWorld for cars practice is I find that their explanations are a little bit better on questions that you've missed and again all three of these resources are free and I'll leave links to all of them in the description down below now with that being said thank you guys so much for watching I hope these tips help you out as much as they helped me if you enjoyed this video please do it a favor leave it a like share it with your friends who are taking the MCAT and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss future videos like this I upload new videos that'll help you crush your MCAT and get into medical school every single Saturday you can watch more videos by clicking here or here that's all I got for today, y'all. I'll see you in the next one, and peace.